Okay, so let's talk a little bit about styles for now. So, um, so we did all this stuff to update, for example, the title. You know, we, we set up the title to be a certain size. We set up this text area to be a certain size. We set up the background to be a certain size, right? So when you look at it like this, uh, where's my uh, eclipse? When I look at my status like this and look in the, in the XML code, um, we did a bunch of settings on a whole bunch of different things, right? So, um, as opposed to doing it over and over and over again, what we could do is we could define a style in which we can kind of put this, these properties in a common style and then have these properties prop be used in other places as well, right? So, for example, uh, next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing another activity. So, I don't want to have to go and remember to set all these 15 properties and everything over and over again, right? So, um, to, to create a style, um, what, what kind of file do you think a style is going to be? Yeah, it's going to be an XML file. And what's a good way of creating any XML in, Android, in Eclipse? Yeah, there's a helper thing called File New Android XML that helps you figure out the names, right? So I'm going to say the file is going to be style.xml and it goes into values, right? And that will create a new file called style.xml. And now inside of this file, see it opens it up in this editor because Eclipse knows of style. So if you click on add, you can say I want to add a new style slash theme. Right? And I can, um, I can say um, let's create a style for uh, for example, for um, title, right? And for and you can specify if it's got if it's got the parent style as well. So I can create one for for title. So I can click on save. Now I can go and add an item to that style, and the item is gonna be one of these things that we're moving from here. So for example, uh, sorry, from here. For example, what we had in the title here was that the Android text size was 30 dp and that the gravity was center. So I would basically need to remember that. So I would copy this and I would say the name of the item is Android text size. The value is 30 dp. Bam. So I click on add and then I'm adding an item to it. Yeah. So I'm going to click that again because now I'm adding another item and this one is going to be Android gravity and I'll say center. Right? Why can't I just copy this? You can, but yeah, you can copy it from here. So, you know, I can, I can copy it from here. I can, for example, take uh, even further. I can take layout. Text view, I need, right? I'm sorry? Why would I take the, just the whole text view tab? I mean, the whole text view XML. Uh, well, it does I mean, you've got to specify each name value pair. So you can't, I mean, what do I, you were thinking like copy this whole thing? Huh. Yeah, but put it into what? It, it, it doesn't work that way. We're kind of outsourcing. What we're doing is we're moving some of this stuff. So, for example, now that I have uh, title, uh, text size, and gravity defined in this other file, I can refer to that file. And the way I'm going to refer to it is by basically saying Android column style equals at style slash title. Right? Exactly. So now this is defined elsewhere. This is defined elsewhere, right? And if I look at it like this, see, it doesn't um, here it doesn't seem to work. I did. Oh, I, no, I did. I saved them all. Uh, it didn't. Doesn't seem to. Yeah, there was an error. There was an error. Where? 
Oh, let me see. No, it's uh, for starting package Android. Um, oh, you know, there's a problem with the style. Let's see. See, it's a uh, uh, control shift F. Hmm. No, there's no problem with the style. Um, let me see. Okay, so um, in um, in here, it's not Android style; it's just style. Yeah, so it's like that. Um, it's um, I remember now, not very intuitive because everything else is Android column. Okay, so but it's just style, and we can take a look and see. It take, still takes effect. Here, so I can outsource all these properties that I'm currently holding here. For example, even um, layout width and layout height. Now I'm not sure this didn't used to work. Um, item name equals layout width, and then what was the width? The width was still parent. Okay, and then layout height. Gonna be uh, wrap content. Okay, so now I can even remove those things from here. Okay, uh, however, that didn't use to work. It does work now. Um, that it didn't used to work in this preview mode. So although it would look wrong, but when you run it, it actually works. But it seems like that you know with with this upgrade, it actually works for me. But it may not work for you, because I know uh, it used to be a bug. So okay, so when you're creating any type of XML file, the the tool to start with is file new Android XML file. Okay, so it asks you the project. The project is Yamba. Uh, file is styles.xml, and it's a value. So all you need to remember is to the, give it a name and value, values. It goes into values directory. Can you tell about the resource What do you mean by resource yeah, No, I mean, do you want a special style for Mexican? Yeah. You may, but you know, we, we're not, you know, all this stuff, all this stuff I would leave for the end. Like you now want to translate it to, you know, Spanish, you now want to provide better look and feel for, you know, square screen and so on. But I would, I would leave that stuff for later. Yeah. And can you go back to the style.xml? Like, how did you add the sadness that part? Like, we copied it, to, so we said add. Did we use add or just copy directly? It's, it's up to you. you so you, you can type it right uh, in XML like this, or you can use the little add button. So if I do add um, at the top level, see, if I, if I have this selected, now if I do add, it's going to say it knows that this is selected, so the only thing I can add is an item, right? So it's context sensitive. Oops. Uh, but if I don't select anything, click on add, it says, what do you want to add? And I'm like, I want to add a new style. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to create a new style now for um, uh, activity, okay? Activity style. It doesn't have a parent, and I save it. So there's my new style. Now, within that style, I'm going to define a bunch of items. So basically, you define a style, and all style is is a bunch of stuff that you moved from the other place. Make sense? Like, for example, I want to add a new item, right? And in the previous one, remember that for status... Remember for uh, w uh, for the background, I used to specify the background here. Yes, make sense. So as opposed to specifying it here, I want to get away from that. So I'm gonna cut this, and I'm gonna copy it here, and then I'm gonna cut the remainder. Okay, and I'm gonna copy it here. Right. So what I'm doing is I'm moving stuff from 
Yeah. Yeah. It just it that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you cannot add items. And um, well, I'm not sure why. I, I'll take a look. But you can always drop into XML, right? So sometimes the tool may you may hit limitations with the tool, but you can always drop into XML. So to reference it now, so to 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 reference the style, it's basically style. Um, equals and then co you know in quotes you say at oops you say at style slash name of the style just like anything else right at style slash activity right so I'm gonna do the same I'm gonna move my orientation vertical I'm gonna outsource all this stuff into into uh, Cut all this stuff. I'm going to say item name. I'm going to copy paste it here. It's a little, maybe a little faster, I don't know, than using the, uh, the little Eclipse tool. Maybe not. And you guys do the same thing for button, create a button style. Right? And I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it manually this time around. So um, so style. So you can use control space as well, right? Button for the most part. So you can I can do control space item, right? Control space name, you know, and then I can add stuff. So text size 25 dp, and then layout width, layout height, also moving. And for the button, um, it was height was wrap content, something like that. And so now I can out. I can take all this stuff out. I can take this out, right? And style equals at style slash button. Interesting. Let's see. And so we're back at square one, but at least we have stuff defined now. Um, elegantly, right? So it works everywhere. Uh, but I still have a problem with the. Um, well, not I have a problem, but I found a bug. See how the button it it doesn't look the same way when it when I run it as in the tool, right? It's misleading. Yeah, that seems to be their bug. And also notice that. Um, so, for example, I may want to take out that. Um, remember how we set them in the manifest? We said theme light. I may take out the theme um, from here, um, but now what I can do is in my style, I can actually specify for the activity. 
um, I can specify the, the background color and you can specify uh, the text or I can make it apparent at Android I can do something like this Let's see if this is gonna actually show up here like that no it doesn't but if I run it Well, um, let me see if I can make uh, a default style. So I'll say uh, something like this, um, control space, style name equals parent, and I can say I'll put some default properties. Like for example, all the background is going to be white, so item uh, name equals back um, Android background I'll say pound uh, FFF for white and the text background is gonna be um, text color what's the name for the text color text color see sometimes you may not know what the property name is like I don't know what the, the name of the item for text color is let me say blah here okay look at what it what it does here um, and text color so that's the one yeah so that's kind of how you can look it up sometimes so I'm gonna say text color Oops. And text color is going to be so it's, uh, it's going to be black, or I'll put a dark color, something like that. So button. is not hmm. it's not taking my parent style for the activity Try something here. So, as opposed to add style slash team light, I'm going to say add style parent. Let's see what comes up.
Hmm. Um, not sure why. Uh huh. Let me do something like this. So I'm going to name this one. Um, yeah, let me see my, my uh, style of theme. That does do it, thing. I'm um, sorry, not this one, but. It's down slash global. There we go. So apply that globally. Yeah, interesting. Um, so what I did in a manif for I added a theme in the manifest file, right? Uh, but theme is just a style. It's just that when you define it as a theme, it propagates to all the elements, so you can put it on the application level. Um, so I had a theme is style global, and then style global is just a uh, uh, something that I defined in here. So just like I said globally, everything's going to have, you know, white background and the text is going to be, at, uh, it's going to be, um, you know, dark. Oh, so you could inherit, use as a parent, the theme like from um, I, I could have inherited that as well, yeah. I could have, uh, I could say parent is um, at Android. Um, style slash theme dot light right and then I could actually take everything out right so if I run it it's essentially my global is actually just the team same yeah there you go so I could have done it like that so we don't really have anything New, it's just that we are renaming it so that we can. It would be good practice though, because then if you want to customize it, you use basically what you have and you just add to it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's kind of so you know you, you can go crazy on this. You can do as much as you want, um, you know. But we basically outsourced uh, a lot of stuff. So what uh, my uh, my file now looks like. Let me close a couple of these things. Um, so if I look at my my st status.xml, 
um, it doesn't. It's much simpler because um, here I only define stuff that is new, right? Here I only define stuff that is new, right? Uh, I guess for edit text, I still have a lot of stuff, right? But it's also not something that I anticipate having anywhere else, so I don't really care about defining it globally. Make sense? Essentially, you went from five or six lines in your layout to just two elements. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that th this way we're gonna reuse all this. So later on, if if we have a button elsewhere, we can just apply button style and so on. Just like XSLT, right? It's it basically it, it's like a CSS or yeah, XSL. CSS, yeah. 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 So far, so good. No. Yeah. Did you get a question? So the status XML looks like this. I mean, I could have outsourced the edit box as well. Uh, Hmm? Fine. So I could literally so every everything so uh, this is all not specific. So I can take that out. I'll copy it here. Um, I'm gonna take this out. Right. I'm gonna cut it. Oops. Um, sorry. Hold on. Cut that. What just happened? Let me um, reopen that. So styles, uh, status. So what I wanted to do is I want to basically copy all this. Okay. And then I'm going to delete these two. I'm going to delete these. Right. I'm going to simplify this to close it like that. Right. This is a bug with Eclipse sometimes. And uh, so in my style, copy all that stuff. Okay. So fill pen, blah, blah, blah. ID, and this is not going to be part of this. So I'm going to say style, right, name equals edit box something like that I'm gonna cut that around it here and then I'm gonna copy in all this stuff okay and then I'm gonna do I mean, it's kind of like massaging this text, unfortunately. So, like that. Sure, somebody can write some kind of script to make this simpler to extract from one to the other. Oh. And then Control Shift F to reformat. So now I have a new style. So now if I wanted to get rid of this uh, I, um, in here, I can just say style equals at style slash that. Reformat it. 
and, and it's kind of annoying that Eclipse every once in a while thinks something's wrong, so it does it, it underlines it yellow. Let's see if a reopening solves that problem, and it doesn't. But this should work, right? So it's much simpler. My layout is m now much simpler because we outsourced a lot of stuff into the CS, quote unquote CSS as well. And there it is. Mm -hmm. Sta status? So basically, uh, I only keep stuff that's uh, specific. So a text, a text, an ID. So text, hint, an ID. That's the only stuff that's specific. But what's new is every single one of them is going to have style attached to them. So style, style, style. So one thing that we could do here is we can specify what kind of a keyboard is going to pop up, right? Uh, we can hint to the system what kind of keyboard. Like right now, you know, when I start typing, uh, it brings up the, this keyboard, which is what we want, right? But if you uh, if you wanted to specify what kind of keyboard, uh, there's something called input type. input type um, and in Ubuntu um, it doesn't work again but it can be one of these like um, text caps text cap words sentence autocorrect blah 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 right so I may say autocorrect for example okay and then um, text um, there's text password text filter phonetic number phone date time okay no it doesn't but you know you would use probably like a phone or a number maybe good right yeah but see if I do like I'm just gonna pick two like text autocorrect and autocomplete bam but what that does so if I look at now XML uh, XML what that did is it added this to my yeah to here right except I don't want it here so I'm going to cut it from here, and now I'm going to move it into my add style sheet, yeah. So I'm going to say this, right? And I'm going to cut this, do it like that. So that's kind of how you can tell the system sort of what kind of a um, keyboard to, to use. Of course, it, there's no special keyboard for IP, but no, number pad is pretty close yeah. enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we're, we're assuming that the person's going to type just in a box, right? So what if they actually decide to write by a or something? Is this actually automatically start scrolling down, or...? Oh, the, the box itself, so the question is about the box, right? So the box itself would scroll, so if I run it, um, it would scroll the As box. Yes. Uh, but uh, your your point was good, and it had to do with, you know, so, oops, what if I do... Uh, uh, now it's going to be updating for that. Uh -huh. See, this is one problem. That we're gonna have to address, right? So um, and I'll explain that later. But we're gonna have to address this problem. But uh, see that then uh, if I go on, so I don't have a new line. Uh, but for example, you know the fact that it doesn't wrap. You can you can press it. Hmm. Um, I have enter on this keyboard. No, it doesn't. It doesn't do that. But it's in, and it doesn't wrap, for example. Is that just a problem with emulator? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or if basically, if you connect your phone, you can. Uh, plus, I don't like my theme. Did you see that how the toast comes up? Yeah. 
Um, we have as uh, we have wrap content, right? As the um, with edit text as one of the attributes, so it should wrap, right? Or do we need to specify that? Well, yeah, it would wrap the content. It's just that we the text itself is n is not being it's it's going like continuously. So there's a you know there's a setting for that. I don't know exactly what it is, but let me take a look. So I would look in this tool again because that's usually the 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 useful. Yeah, I guess my question had to do with more like the vertical scroll bars. Yeah. Eventually, right? With yeah, it would. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure for wrapping. Lines. Um, that the maximum width is let's see makes the text even most this many pixels wide. That's maximum length may be more appropriate. Length as the sets the input filter to constrain the text length to a specific number. So max length may be more specific. Like for example, I could put 140 here, right? Uh, but uh, but that's still not telling me the um, the how to wrap um, and if I don't know exactly which one it is it's one of the properties um, is scroll contain yeah but it will automatically uh, scroll if it needed to. So now um, remember when you actually minimized the wrap on your homepage? Uh huh. You Icon for which one? No, so on my I see an icon. Yeah. Yeah. So that I well, that icon is this icon here. Okay, so that's the icon. So that's the icon that's gonna go on a home page. Oh, not on a home page. On in the launcher, right? Yeah. And so you know, if I double click on it, um, you're gonna see um, that's the icon, right? So you just replace that icon, so and the default word icon that uh, PNG. Yeah, and that icon is referenced from the manifest file because it says here which icon to use. Oh, okay. So if you provided a new icon, you can either change name or just replace the actual image. Oh, so that's the name. Of the manifest. Yeah, yeah. Um, so back to. Um, yeah, so I, I I'm not sure exactly what properties for uh, wrapping, but yes, that's one thing that we you know we could set up set up the wrapping on uh, how to wrap that element. Um, okay, so any, uh, are you guys still working on this, or do you wanna are you ready to send something else? So let's do one other modification to this. Um, so what I would like to do is I would like to make the button um, find an image for a button, right? So like make some this a little something nicer. So let's uh, I mean let's try our luck on um, on Google and what if I go and find some Twitter? Let's say for example I wanted this button to be my my uh, my button, right? For for uh, the the background, right? Make sense. So I'm gonna save this file, save image as. So I just search for Twitter PNG, and it's the first one I found. So I'll say button BG. Okay. And now I can go into Eclipse just like before. Click on refresh, right, to find it. So we now know about button BG that updates are right away. So now what I would like to do is for button I can specify the background and I could do it in the, directly in the button in status XML or I could do it in the style XML. It's up to you, right? It doesn't really matter. So let's say we're doing it style. So I could say in style for button I can say you know you can copy one of the from activity for example I can just say um, add background drawable and then button BG. Right. If I save that, if you look at this status like this, see it doesn't show me this way. It's a bug. 
but let's let's run it and see what happens. Okay, so that's our button, and it became became the um, you know it's it's there, right? The problem is how it stretches, or it doesn't, right? Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. That's the problem you had earlier, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we don't like that, right? We would like uh, uh, the way I imagined this is I imagined to have my button be like this with the little nicely styled T here, right? Make sense? That's what I would imagine. So how do we do that? So, um, so there's a tool uh, called draw nine patch. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just run draw nine patch like this in a command line bam just I can't I can do that because um, it's in my I can't do that huh. you guys can do that right interesting why is it not working this is new this is the this is the part of the update um, so tools draw nine patch let's run it this way and see if it works So if I double click, no, it's, for me it still doesn't find it. For you guys it worked? It, start, it started? Um, you draw a nine patch. Uh, why doesn't it start properly? The what? <laughs> yeah, that's why I mean that's why it didn't work. But um, okay, so let me um, let me do this. I have older versions of SDK Mac alternative. Okay, I have an old version of of. Draw nine patch. I, don't, I doubt anything changed, but you know, if you start started, it's going to look like this. And you know, you can drop your file. Like for example, I can go into my code. Uh, I can go to Yamba, and that image that we wanted to make uh, look nicer, right? The button BG. Oh, you know what? Button BG is a JPEG. I just noticed. Uh, first thing. First thing first. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that, that I save it as a PNG. So, so it, it still shows up even if it's a JPEG. You it's yeah, it's preferred to have a PNG, and we're actually going to need a PNG in this case. So JPEG I'm going to delete. So now button BG PNG. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it and drop it into, into here, into this tool. Or you can just go file open. Uh, open right so you get to open up a file okay so now what this tool does is it shows you uh, it shows you your button right and it shows you on the left hand side how that button would scale on the right hand side how that button would scale let me make it to see it shows you how the scale works x y axis and both right so both of course is going to scale properly Right, but see how the when I scale it just on X or uh, just on Y, it doesn't look very hot, right? Make sense? So what you can do with this tool is you can draw a uh, a nine patch, and the way you do it is by drawing. So hold on, let me show bad patches. Let me. It's a, the, the image is very big, so uh, um, so what I'm doing here is first of all I need to delete the patches that I already did. So what is it what it's doing? It's we're trying to set the uh, which part of it is scaled and which part is not. Let me delete. 
And the problem is that it's so tiny. See, what I would like to do is I would like to make only a part of it stretchable. And what I can do is I can define a, uh, uh, a little line here. No. Uh, I can define a little line here that is now becoming stretchable. Okay. So, so see how now the this stays or just on the one side. There we go. See how the, the T is not deformed, it stays on one side, mm -hmm. and here the T stays just at the top, right? And if I scale it on both, it, the, T, the T stays in the corner. There's obviously some a little bit of a uh, gap here, but like that. And let me delete one more pixel there. See how now I have a much better looking... Yeah, so what you're doing, so what you're, show patches. So here's what I'm doing here. Um, I'm basically saying that I want a certain pixel to be stretched. So imagine that this whole, normally the whole thing would equally stretch. Mm -hmm. um, by putting a little line here and a little line here, I'm saying that the only point that's going to stretch is the point of intersection, which is that point there. And that's that white area. Well, nothing other than that white area. So now, basically, this button, um, let me clean that. Uh, so now this button is uh, looks different. Let me, let me draw it, let me point it out in a different way. So uh, I'm just going to save this one really quickly. Uh, I'm going to save it back into my project, and I'll show you a better example, because this, this one that I just picked up is not the best example. So um, let me see. Oops. Um, and, um, so, Android Workspace, um, Yamba, Resources. And the way you would want to save it is you would use the same uh, file name as the original, but do a dot nine dot, right? And then Eclipse actually knows to load that one uh, first, right? So now if I run it, it should actually use... Um, hold on, it needs to refresh here. Okay. So let me just run it and, and test it, and then I'll show you a better example. Let's see. I guess an alternative would be to do it in Photoshop. Well, you could, yes. Oh, this is still big. Um, in Photoshop, you could do it in Photoshop. The problem with that is that it, you still, it, still, let me, let's pick a different example. So here is a, let me find a button. I'll just find a regular looking um, button that doesn't, so hold on a second. Um, development, static files, skin, so images, let me find some skin, just some Im uh, web website button, uh, button, okay, button blue, okay, let me pick a button like this, alright, so this is just a regular button, I'm gonna copy it, okay, and I'm gonna, or I'm gonna drag and drop it, and it's gonna cause a whole bunch of problems. So I'm gonna drop it into this folder here, okay. Now it causes problems because of the backgrounds, right? So I'm gonna rename it to button blue, button blue dot. Well, I lost the extension. Button blue dot png. Right. So th there's my new button. So now, let me do this tool differently. So I'm going to close that. I guess I got to restart a tool. 
again, draw nine fetch. Ugh. From alternative. Okay, tools and then draw nine patch. Okay, so I'm gonna pick the different tool, right? Uh, different uh, button. Yamba resource drawable. Okay, I'm gonna take that button blue. Okay, all right. So this is easier to see, right? So you guys see how I have a uh, um, I have a button, and you can see how it scales. Okay, make sense? Okay. So check this out. So here's the problem. If I extremely scale it, and if I let me give give this a little bit more space. If I scale it, notice the here's the problem. Um, this button has a beautiful one pixel line, white line around it, right? But when you scale it, that's what happens. This way, this line becomes really squished, and this way, this line becomes really wide. You see the problem? So, in other words, everything is proportionally scaled. That's not what I want. I would like certain areas to scale and certain areas not to scale. Okay? Does it make sense? So, with this tool, um, what you can do is you can draw a 9 patch. And the way you draw it is by doing a 1 pixel. Basically, it extends your image by 1 pixel. And it allows you to draw a little 1 pixel black border box, right? That is basically is going to say which area is stretchable. So now what I'm saying is the middle is stretchable and the middle is stretchable here, but the corners are not stretchable. And yes, you can do this in Photoshop, but this tool is just designed for this, right? So, um, so there you go, right? So now notice how this line is still preserved nicely. Right, nice, nicely preserved. Okay, so let me show you differently. What I've done is, if I show patches, do you see nine boxes now here? Right, so one, two, let me write it like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine and now I'm gonna move my mouse so you can see those boxes yes mm -hmm. that's why it's called a nine patch so I have defined nine patches and the five is the patch that's gonna stretch right the most right both horizontally and vertically so that's where my content is gonna be so in other words if I have a large button small button square button rectangular button doesn't matter it should preserve its edges because one, three, seven, and nine are not going to be stretched. So what is the bandwidth? Um, I, I, I don't know. According to this, everything. But what does it even mean? How can how can you call anything bad? It's what I define. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm I'm not sure. This, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, I'm not sure what that shows me. Um, uh, you know, this works really well when I do it like this, right? Mm -hmm. So. You know, uh, but I'm not sure why it's, it's call, it calls so, it. So, my question was, uh, so this you're defining what you get inside, right? Yeah. What I was looking for is not necessarily inside the location, but what is the image. The whole image gets scaled down to the size that it's originally. See, that's what was not happening, right? I had a business status text bar, and I tried to put a big image in there. Okay, maybe it got squished badly, but I didn't care. I wanted it to get squished to begin with. It didn't get squished. Yeah, it doesn't get squished. It gets increased. I'm not sure why. I don't know if it actually can get squished. So one way in that case would be to actually start with a squished image and have it scaled up properly. Yeah. Um, so in this case, if you, when you do this and you're happy with the look and feel and all, and all that, um, and by the way, you can delete this. So you can see how if I delete this, uh, I can maybe make a smaller area be uh, a, uh, stretchable in the middle or something like that, right? Um, anyway, once you're happy with this, you go and you save this as the same file name but dot uh, dot, uh, dot .png, right? So resources, drawable, 
so it's going to be button blue dot nine dot png save it um, and now I'm going to refresh this I'm going to delete the other bu uh, button blue so I'm going to leave the dot nine one okay so now I'm yeah um, so button blue so if I look at it see there it is and if I run it um, um, I don't know if it has to I have to, I would have to try it but that's that's the standard yeah but see now the button is actually looking nice. Too bad that there's not a little bit of a, a space around the button to actually provide to see what it looks like. But we can provide a space, right, by providing a padding. So for example, 10 dp. So not pad, not padding, but margin, right? Uh, margin 10 dp, there, like that, right? But except I don't want to put it there. I'd rather put the margin in the style sheet. So I'm going to copy it from this one and I'm going to add it here, reformatting that. And I'll say, sure, 15 is fine. So let's run it. Uh huh. Pick the target. So it should be now lined up and the button should look nicer. There it is, right? And if you look at the button, you can see the edge is actually nice, right? Perfect. Now, even if I go and I change this to the other layout, so I turn it around, it still looks good, right? Although the button is now much longer and all that, right? So the how did you change the layout? Uh, it's Control F11. Okay, so does that make sense? Okay, so why don't you guys try it? Like, find some button or some image, and you know, um, ma make it into a nine nine patch. If you if you have nine patch working again.